Alaska is popular for its vast and unpopulated wilderness, but for some theorists, it is a place of mystery that may be a home for extraterrestrial presence. In recent years, a number of anomalies have been reported about certain areas, like Mount Hayes, which stands as one of Alaska's tallest peaks. There has been a great frequency of UFO sightings reported, and in 1995, the CIA declassified records that revealed this peak was under an intense secret government project named Stargate. Is there a top secret base in Alaska? Join us as we reveal the secrets of Alaska told by a US government insider. The Black Pyramid. Living in Alaska's huge interior with its rocky mountains, thick forests and freezing rivers is not for the weak of heart. Although McGrath is a small community that takes pride in its adaptability, locals know something strange is happening in the air. McGrath has long been a hotspot for strange activity, including sightings of aliens and UFOs. The explanation of the phenomenon may be found at one point outside the town. There has been a long-running tale about a black pyramid built by extraterrestrials that is hidden in Alaska. Some believe it has been just a deserted ancient generator left behind, while others believe the aliens are still using it to broadcast messages around the universe, with our government helping them. The construction work on the Black Pyramid is believed to have been done under the ground and covered during the Ice Age. The fact that there are no actual buildings nearby, but that the area is gated, and there are signs that forbid entry is still considered. Alaska is first on the list of all 50 states in terms of alien activity, and therefore, the people of McGrath are quite suspicious about a dead zone in the town's deep forest. In addition to the vacant land, the air traffic control systems often need help with navigation over this 200-acre stretch. Moreover, the village residents have encountered UFO disks hovering close to them. For years, there have been more questions than answers, but the truth is finally beginning to show. An anonymous former member of the U.S. Army has revealed some information to the public about the government's level of top secrecy while overshadowing the consequences. At the peak of the Cold War, he worked in the communication section, being responsible for transmitting the most important messages. His task was to see that the information was supplied to the president at the needed time. They and their colleagues felt surprised when they received a message one day in 1983 that he had decided. Thus, upon processing this message, they realized the subject was the Alaskan Black Pyramid and had to be delivered to at least 10 or 15 commanders in all the units nearby. The provided message had the coordinates of the site of the Alaskan Black Pyramid, but they had to determine the location before they could figure out the pyramid's purpose. They had to utilize the standard globe map to locate the green coordinates because it happened in the early 1980s and there was no internet connection like it is now. Using the longitude and latitude of the experiment's intended location as a starting point, they can see it was somewhere on the graph southwest of Denali. The existence of the Black Pyramid beneath Alaska is now officially acknowledged for the first time, thanks to this private confirmation. What is the military concealing and why, if they have been aware of the pyramid for decades? According to the whistleblower, the government and military are only covering the discovery because they believe it to be politically advantageous. They will stop at nothing to maintain the discovery's secrecy and spread false information. The specialist has been trying to decode the message for the past 38 years, and based on top secret intelligence, he thinks he may be coming close to a solution. The expert's best guess is that the individuals who erected the Black Pyramid were the same aliens who constructed the ones in Giza. The aliens are waiting here, and it's possible they once lived here in a civilization that eventually perished and left behind rights for whatever reason. Reports of mysterious activities in the Black Pyramid. With these unusual features, the Black Pyramid is huge and thought to have been built millions of years ago. It is hardly unexpected that this structure has given rise to much conjecture. Alaska is roughly 2.5 times larger than Texas and contains many climates including deserts, oceans, mountains, rainforests, jungles, cities, and more. Here, a large chunk of the land is controlled by the federal government or considered uninhabitable because of the local climate. 
With an Air Force Army joint base almost the size of Anchorage situated just outside the city, the government maintains a significant presence in the state. Not only does Alaska present the opportunity for secret facilities inside the hostile federal territory, but it would also be foolish for the U.S. government to overlook these benefits from a strategic standpoint. For this reason, it is not surprising that Alaska is at the epicenter of a story speculating on the existence of a massive pyramid structure beneath it, which is allegedly hidden by the U.S. military. Could a pyramid under Alaska's frozen surface be larger than all the known pyramids in the world? To explore this story, we will focus on the revelations made by Douglas A. Mutchler. It is important to stress that Doug, as his friends call him, comes from a respectable background. Thus, he would be unwise to jeopardize his reputation by making up wild stories. He worked for the U.S. Army as a counterintelligence officer based at Fort Richardson, located outside of Alaska. He checked the map as part of his routine when he got to a new assignment to ensure his operational area was correct, and he saw an anomaly. He had no idea this strange finding would lead to a riddle that would haunt him for the rest of his life. A significant part of the map had been purposefully left off and marked as needing to be surveyed. This sparked questions about potentially hidden information, but he ignored it because he was used to the military's demand to follow protocol. But it seems as though destiny was directing him to solve the mystery of Alaska. It all began when China carried out the largest underground nuclear explosion in its history in 1992. Half a year after the nuclear test, this occurrence gave geologists and other scientists a chance to explore the Earth's crust. Douglas took a chance. News revealed on Channel 13 of NBC addressed a bizarre finding which took place after China's nuclear blast. It was reported that the devastation of the explosion was so extraordinary that the seismic waves traveled 4,000 kilometers and reached Alaska, where earthquake monitoring stations registered them. Through them, scientists probed the density of this rock as it moved by. According to the news story, the subsurface scans had discovered and recognized something amazing. An underground building shaped like a perfect pyramid. Pursuits for excavations in tunnels and lift shafts made it possible for experts to discover the new pyramids 80 kilometers southwest of Mount McKinley in Alaska. The matching of the pyramid's location with the unexplored region of Alaska, which Doug had earlier identified on the map, also interested him. It dawned on him that this was the dirty little secret the local government was hiding in that area. He expected this revelation, given its significance, to make news and be published again. But he was wrong. As a result, he decided to watch the report that was broadcast on the local Anchorage channel. He intended to obtain a duplicate of the report above. As he was leaving the station, the station manager told him they hadn't aired any stories like that. A film editor approached Doug, but she needed help to help him immediately with his search. Just before she revealed a disturbing revelation, the editor verified that the piece had been aired on the station. There were now two people there and they took the recordings. He didn't let this go and a few years later, he plucked up the courage to look through official records to learn the truth. However, he was met by two odd officials who took the files away and insisted that he didn't have the required security clearance. Doug would only make his revelation widely known 20 years later. It all started when he sent an email to Linda Moulton. Linda is a well-known American investigative journalist specializing in UFOs and interested in unexplained phenomena. He told the journalist in his message that he thought the government was hiding a large underground pyramid-shaped facility in Alaska. During Linda's July 2012 radio show on Coast to Coast AM, she revealed to the public the existence of the Dark Pyramid. Following Linda's revelations, she met with Doug for a pre-recorded interview. She was flooded with tales and details regarding the location from alleged whistleblowers, including Bruce Pearson. When Bruce Pearson's father was flown to the pyramid for a supply drop-off operation, he had close contact with this mysterious building. Both the friend and the pilot had been military pilots in the past. To his amazement, Mr. Pearson's father discovered they were traveling to an underground pyramid instead of what he had initially thought was a radar installation. The father was told they were going to a generating plant just before takeoff. When he inquired whether this meant a nuclear plant, 
He was told it was a non-nuclear establishment 150 feet below the surface and had ancient roots. It also resembled a pyramid. The pilot continued by telling the father about the pyramid's incredible power output, which could power the entire nation of Canada, as well as its mysterious origin, which left everyone in the helicopter stunned. While traveling, they observed a tiny fixed-wing aircraft following them, carrying three aluminum cases. Though they had some reservations at first, they were told that the helicopter's sirens would sound about five meters from the scene, and they did. The helicopter briefly suffered an all-electric malfunction, so fast that even the compass began to spin. When they arrived at the location, they saw several buildings, including a motor pool and a few mine shaft lifts. Because he had grown up in a neighborhood where mining shafts were common, Pearson's father could easily identify them. The armed guardhouses were situated atop the electrified fences around the lifts. Armed with black clothes free of branding, base personnel leveled their firearms toward the chopper. Amazingly, it took six men to unload the three cases, and no paperwork was involved. A person identified only as the 46-year-old adopted offspring of a retired electrical engineer from the West provided an additional narrative. He claimed that his father had told him about the Dark Pyramid in Alaska, and he also disclosed that in the early 1960s, his father had worked on a powerful electrical system inside. Strange Alien Sightings in America Theo Chesley, a pilot, claimed to have seen a UFO in Alaska. A writer and researcher, David Chris, spoke with Chesley to comprehend the interaction. According to 35-year veteran pilot Chesley, the event happened in October 2019 during a flight northeast of a mountain. They saw something resembling a disc and a tail. It turned and hovered close to the peak. Something more shot out of the mountain and a green sphere materialized. Chesley became concerned about the UFO incident when he noticed something flying inside the sphere in the sky. The estimated size of the object, which could be seen from 40 to 50 miles away, was half a mile broad. Chesley flew alone again and had another strange event six months later. Above the volcano, a sudden cloud formation that changed shapes appeared. Chesley noticed irregularities in the autopilot as his plane veered off course in the direction of the mountain. He had to manually adjust the plane's trajectory because he thought there might have been a magnetic influence on the autopilot. The Alaskan UFO experience gains legitimacy from Chesley's account. Gigantic UFO sighting and the CIA cover-up. While transporting cargo from Paris to Tokyo on November 17, 1986, Japan Airlines Flight 1628 experienced a noteworthy UFO sighting. Near Anchorage, the crew, under the command of Captain Kenju Tarauchi, spotted odd lights. After these oval-shaped lights moved near the aircraft, Captain Tarauchi tried to prevent a possible collision by reporting the situation to air traffic control. The UFOs vanished from the cockpit as bright lights filled it and were replaced by a large object called a gigantic spaceship. After Captain Tarauchi informed air traffic control of this, NORAD was notified. Another flight was diverted to see the UFO, but it disappeared before it got there. An FAA investigation resulted from the event's confirmation by witnesses and communication logs. In response, Japan Airlines reassigned Captain Tarauchi to a desk job. Captain Tarauchi had contacted Kyoto News in December 1986, frustrated by the need for answers. The FAA's division chief, John Callahan, launched an investigation simultaneously. However, CIA operatives seized the material during a meeting after the participants shared information, denying the existence of the meeting. Nevada nuclear explosion? During the upshot Knoll nuclear test in 1953 at 5.05 a.m., a disc-shaped object was observed fast dropping from the sky following a detonation, moving south towards Las Vegas before vanishing into the mountains. Two days later, authorities from the government assembled a group of scientists for an extraordinary task, to look into the crash of an unknown flying object close to Kingman, Arizona, a city located 175 miles south of the nuclear test site. Forty engineers got on a bus from Phoenix and traveled to Kingman for three and a half hours. When they arrived at night, military police were stationed around the entire 40-foot diameter ship. 
Four entities were connected to the vessel and taken to Groom Lake in Nevada's Area 51. When Area 51 was first established, it was a simple facility, and the aliens and craft were hidden in the isolated Nevada desert. Concealed amid a mountain range, they constructed Area 51. There have been rumors that Area 51, a covert military facility, has evidence of extraterrestrial technology. There are rumors that an alien known as J-Rod survived the 1953 Kingman UFO crash and was kept in a special facility at Area 51. J-Rod was supposedly assigned to assist in reverse engineering the technology from the 1953 Kingman UFO crash during his years at Area 51. J-Rod was among the crash survivors who worked directly with the government. Midway through the 1960s, Area 51 was home to Captain Bill Uhouse, a former Navy pilot who subsequently flew testing planes for the U.S. Air Force. He claims to have had direct communication with J-Rod in addition to studying the supposed wrecked aircraft near Kingman, Arizona. Dan Burrish, another whistleblower, asserts that he was employed as a microbiologist to see after J-Rod's medical needs. According to Bill Uhouse and Dan Beish, this went on for years. J-Rod resided in an exclusive underground room at Area 51. Reports of aliens collaborating with the U.S. government abound. Scary UFO Encounter Midair While returning to Mexico City on May 3, 1975, pilot Carlos de los Santos encountered an unusual situation in Zanto, Mexico. After dropping off passengers, he noticed several strange objects in the sky, small flying saucers close to his plane. Carlos was alarmed as they made his plane climb on its own. The plane shot up 3,000 meters, and he lost control. Carlos's breathing became difficult, and he grew concerned because his plane was not pressurized. He thought his plane was raised higher and gained control with the flying saucer underneath it. Fearfully, Carlos contacted for assistance, describing the unexplained objects near his jet. The thing sped away as the plane approached the mountains. Carlos eventually got control again, but his landing gear was wrecked. This peculiar episode made headlines in Mexico, and Carlos was even advised not to talk about it. He landed safely despite the scare, and he later told his story. After the collision, Carlos could not lower his landing gear and circuit the airfield 10 times. He ultimately lowers the landing gear and safely lands the airplane with the assistance of a screwdriver, with assistance from Mexican air traffic control tracking the items, this occurrence became a significant subject in Mexican media. Later in life, Carlos discloses that he was repeatedly advised not to discuss his experiences by mysterious individuals called Men in Black. UFO Photo Revealed 4th of September 1971 Working for the National Geographic Institute, a photographer named Sergio Loa shot images of a hydropower plant at Lake Cot every 13 seconds to create maps from an aircraft at an altitude of roughly 10,000 feet. Later, when he develops the pictures, he discovers an oddity in one of them. To the right-hand side of the corner is a beaming circular thing. It seems strange that it's not in the picture before or after. He is implied to be silent about this matter by the National Geographic Institute. The width of the object is said to be approximately 60 feet. Following the publication of the image in a media release in 1979, UFO experts became more interested. Similarly, even the Costa Rican people recognized it as an authentic UFO photograph. While some ponder it could be an error, like a speck of mold on the picture. On the other hand, the original photos were submitted in 2021 by Sergio Loa's friend while it was rescanned. The object, which looked like a disc, was easily seen in the newly added photos. NASA's classified documents. Gary McKinnon, who lives in London, was arrested on March 19, 2002, for the hacking of the Pentagon and NASA. He made a full confession and informed the public that he unearthed evidence indicating the U.S. government had collaborated with extraterrestrials. McKinnon claimed to have uncovered a covert space-based U.S. military program. He discovered a list of non-terrestrial officers and unusual ship names. He believes that a space military or fleet may exist. Following his arrest, McKinnon was facing a potential U.S. jail sentence of 70 years. He successfully argued against being put there for 10 years, but he is still subject to an arrest warrant 
so he cannot go. The main concern is whether McKinnon's findings from hacking into NASA and the Pentagon's computers are accurate. Bob Lazar's testimony. A man by the name of Bob Lazar appeared from the shadows in the late 1980s, claiming to know a secret government facility called S-4, located near the infamous Area 51 at Groom Lake, Nevada, and making claims that would affect not only the UFO community, but also those outside of it. Lazar said he had worked from this facility, doing reverse engineering on alien technology. Lazar made a lot of dramatic remarks in the beginning. Claiming aliens created them, he described nine different types of spaceships. One craft, dubbed the Sport Model by him, was powered by a reactor that used an element that science had not yet recognized. Lazar asserted that element 115 might create anti-gravity effects, allowing the spacecraft to undertake motions that defied recognized physics to bolster his assertions. Lazar discussed the division of labor at S-4, stating that it took a lot of work to fully comprehend the activities because teams worked in separate compartments with access to only their projects and information. The operation is intended to guarantee the most privacy. Lazar's statements provided a framework and level of depth not found in UFO statements. Not only did this person claim to have seen UFOs, but they also claimed to have worked on them. He gave precise directions, technical details, and even an overview of the events. His revelations fueled public outrage over what many believed to be long-standing government secrets regarding extraterrestrial encounters. However, Lazar's declarations caused more than simply a flurry of anticipation. They also created an uproar of uncertainty. His narrative was met with swift criticism for several reasons, including inaccuracies in the places he portrayed and his educational background. Despite the criticisms, Lazar accomplished something truly remarkable. David Grosh's announcement. A former intelligence officer who is now a whistleblower revealed that top government officials are concealing a top secret program to locate and investigate extraterrestrial bodies and he fears for his life because he chose to come out. Grush claimed that Congress has never been informed about or even been made aware of a highly classified program that exists to recover and reverse engineer extraterrestrial unidentified flying objects. The former officer was a member of a task force established in 2019 to investigate unmanned aerial phenomena or UAPs at the National Reconnaissance Office or NRO which is mostly focused on satellites. Given the growing percentage of Americans with little faith in the government, the former airman's statement before Congress is likely to increase mistrust, particularly when interest in extraterrestrial objects is expanding. According to papers, he claims to have seen Benito Mussolini's government discovered a non-human spaceship in 1933, which the Vatican and the Five Eyes helped the United States acquire in 1944 or 1945. Grush claims to have secondhand knowledge that American individuals have been harmed and killed as a result of their government's efforts to conceal the truth. The U.S. Department of Defense, DOD, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, refuted his claims from June 2023, saying that no proof of extraterrestrial life had been found and that there was no credible information about anyone having extraterrestrial materials or knowing how to reverse engineer them. Grush confirmed several statements while testifying under oath before the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Accountability in July 2023. Retired fighter pilot Ryan Graves and retired U.S. Navy Commander David Fravor also testified about their encounters with UFOs. Grush stated in his testimony that he could not provide in-depth information regarding certain topics in public although he did offer to give representatives more information in a secure information facility, SCIF. Are aliens real? The prospect of life beyond Earth has long captivated human curiosity. Since humanity discovered that Mars and other surrounding planets were different from other points of light in the night sky, people have believed in the possibility of extraterrestrial life in these worlds. Whether we are alone in the universe still needs to be answered, even though modern technology has made it possible for us to investigate those worlds up close and even to look at and hear planets orbiting other stars. The absence of proof of extraterrestrial life does not exclude the possibility of life elsewhere. 
Scientists feel increasingly certain that extraterrestrial life must exist the more we understand the universe, from the planets and moons in our solar system to the vast emptiness beyond. Many people have an alien belief. However, this idea is mostly based on movies and reports of UFOs. However, science sheds light on the possibility that we are not alone in the universe and can address some of the most pressing concerns regarding the nature of life that is most likely to exist. An alternative way to frame the question of whether alien life exists would be to ask the likelihood that Earth is the only planet in the universe where life has evolved. There could be two trillion galaxies or more in the observable universe. One estimate puts the number of stars in our Milky Way galaxy at least a hundred billion. It becomes increasingly plausible that most stars in the universe have at least one planet orbiting them, as exoplanet research continues to reveal the frequency of planets around other stars. Furthermore, as the solar system's investigation has demonstrated, moons can support life as we know it. When considering whether or not we are alone, these considerations combined imply that there are an astounding 20 sextillion or 20 billion trillion worlds to consider. Is Earth one in 20 sextillion then? Or is it more conceivable that life has emerged more than once, given the number of worlds in the universe? Thank you for watching. Let us know your thoughts on the Black Alien Pyramid in the comments sections below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like, see you on the next one.